I am currently designing a freelance railroad. I want to start working on the operation scheme now so that I can have it worked out for when I start building it. So I'm going to be using my current layout to work on the operation scheme. Today I'm going to be going over that new railroad, how it ties into the current railroad that I'm building, operate my current railroad like that freelance railroad, and even show you some artwork for the custom designs for locomotives and rolling stock. Special thanks to these model railroad businesses for their support. Stay tuned at the end of this episode for some special discount codes. Before we get into the op session, let me go over the freelance railroad that I am calling the Blue Ridge and Western Railroad. Please keep in mind that though I will be mentioning real places and real railroads, this is entirely fictional. The Blue Ridge and Western Railroad is a subsidiary of the North Carolina Railroad, which is a real company that operates over 300 miles of railroad in North Carolina. Now in my world, the North Carolina Railroad owns several short lines including the Yakin Valley Railroad and the Blue Ridge and Western. The subsidiaries were created because of legal conflicts with Virginia and Tennessee in regards to the state-owned North Carolina Railroad owning track beyond the borders of the state. The Blue Ridge and Western is a combination of a multitude of Appalachian regional short lines across western North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, and southwest Virginia. The railroad makes the majority of its revenue from two main sources, the mines, quarry, and timber industry of the region, and the fees that come from the trackage rights to two of the most direct routes across the southern Appalachian Mountains by Norfolk Southern and CSX. By the way, it's Appalachian. I know this because I went to Appalachian State University, and it's not a good idea to go there and pronounce it the other way. So what does all this mean for what I'm doing today? Well, I'm going to be running my railroad like it's a section of this fictional line. We're going to do two main things. One is take cars from through trains and get them where they need to go. In this case, it'll be taking it from Norfolk Southern and CSX trains. And the second is going to be grabbing cars that need to go to and from the adjacent Yakin Valley Railroad short line and all the industries there. By the way, this is the connection that it makes to the railroad that I'm building currently, which is a modified proto-lance version of the Yakin Valley Railroad. These are all pretty much hopper cars for various raw materials that are going to be picked up. We're going to be using the West Valley Industries for the timber-related industry and the East Valley Industries that are going to represent the mineral-based industries. For my power, I'm going to be building up a bunch of old used power for the railroad. This will mainly be old Conrail power, and I've started with these two Atlas Jeep 15s, and I intend to do a slight repaint of these. The first job is going to be picking up from the mines and quarries. Number 1615 is going to head out to do just that. As it is heading out, Yakin Valley Railroad 6007 is hauling empties for the sawmills to get wood chips for the OSB board plants. Now, I am using some old 70 ton coal hoppers to represent this, but eventually I'm gonna have some proper wood chip hoppers. Sixty O Seven drops the hoppers and heads back to the Yakin Valley Railroad. Now it's Sixteen O Five's turn to head out. It will be grabbing those empty hoppers and heading to the sawmills. While this was going on, 1615 returns with its cars in time for a CSX train to roll in with drop-offs and to pick up the cars from the mines and quarries.
1615 then proceeds to do the switch out of the cars. Once this is done, the CSX train heads out. Sixteen fifteen is then able to take those drop-offs back to the mines and quarries before the day is out. By this time, sixteen oh five is able to return with the wood chip hoppers bound for the Yakin Valley Railroad. These will sit in the yard until tomorrow when they'll be picked up and taken back down the mountain to the Yakin Valley Railroad. Sixteen oh five is then available to sort drop-offs from a Norfolk Southern train, which are just more hoppers, and then put itself away for the night. Sixteen fifty returns a little later and does the same. So there's my first attempt at an operation station. Now, why did I do this? Well, I want to see what sort of kinks I need to iron out. Since I am building a modular layout, I can adjust the modules as I go to better fit the operation I want to do. The biggest thing that I learned is that I will ultimately want to have two yards on this railroad once I get the whole thing done. One's going to be in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, and one's going to be in Spruce Pine, North Carolina. These will serve as the two main hubs for the railroad. Now I can have other smaller yards, but these will be the main hubs. So now I can get to designing what I want to build. Speaking of designs, here is some artwork that I've designed for the Blue Ridge and Western. I went with a very simple design. The BRW will be easy to replicate on whatever I decide to put it on, plus it's clean and simple. Before we go, check out some of these really cool model railroad businesses. Mini Prints creates 3D printed detail parts, figures, and animals that make your model railroad layout come alive. Get 15% off with code DIY15 at miniprints.com because it's the little things that matter most. 
Penguin 3D Workshop offers 3D prints and electronics for model railroading, specializing in hard or impossible to find train parts, and they also offer custom designing and printing. Use promo code DDRR5OFF to get 5% off your order. Scaletree.com Scaletree.com makes hero and forest trees for HO and in scale. They also do custom trees for custom orders. Check them out at Scaletree.com. Model Railway Backshop is a great place if you're looking for a quality paint job for your old or new brass model locomotive. If you're looking to get that brass model weathered, you can get that done too. And right now, you can get 10% off any brass model painting and weathering job by using the promo code NMRA10. Check them out at ModelRailwayBackshop.com. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.